We are back. Sam Cedar on the Majority Report on the phone. It's a pleasure to welcome back to the program David Nywart. He's the author of And Hell Followed With Her. He is the proprietor of Orsinus, not Ornicus, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Orsinus. It's not even remotely close to what I've been calling it for literally, I think, 10 years, um, <laughs> and, which is no surprise, and also uh, blogs over at the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, David, welcome uh, back to the program. Thanks for having me, Sam. So, all right, uh, you, you've been writing about, you know, this... Uh, <laughs> It seems that in many respects, everything in, and I, you know, I watched the new uh, Donald Trump ad today. I watched uh, uh, the ad put out by uh, uh, Ted Cruz. Uh, and of course, the the story of what's going on in Oregon is in the news. This is sort of like um, both ends of of uh, of what I imagine nearly every bookshelf in your house looks like, right? I mean, it's, 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 it, 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 it's covering both ends of that spectrum. Let's start yeah. in Oregon. Um, who, who, tell people who these guys are, you know, and what is the sort of the ideological underpinnings of these, I guess there's about 15 of them, maybe there's 20, uh, who have basically locked themselves in a federal building in a... A, a bird reserve out in Oregon and are, I don't know, what, what are they hoping to do? Take down the country from there or, or what? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's sort of their, their uh, big picture. That's definitely what their long-term goal is. Uh, at this point, what they really are trying to do is challenge the federal government's ownership of all these uh, public lands out in the West. And this uh, looked like them an opportunity to do it, mainly because, I mean, you know, all, all of this is supposedly under the rubric of standing up for this ranching family that was out there and, and got sent to prison for uh, setting fires uh, out on their lands that spread to public lands. And that's federal arson crime, and, and it comes with pretty heavy penalties. And, and so... These guys showed up to to supposedly defend the Hammond family, but the Hammond family and pretty much everybody in Burns is saying, "Please go away," you know. They 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 just don't want them there. Um, but they had a you know they had bigger fish to fry than whatever was going on really there in Burns. And what they really are about is is trying to create this showdown with the federal government over its ownership of public lands. And in that regard, they're, they're actually um, kind of, they're, in a lot of ways, what they're being is a sort of armed vigilante front for the Koch brothers. And uh, they're, I mean, the Kochs and a lot of other big money interests right now are, are financing this effort to uh, legislatively take away um, federally owned public lands in the West. And, um, and these guys are sort of being the armed militia wing of that effort. So, well, hmm. yeah, I mean, expand on that a little bit for us, because, I mean, I don't think that people under, I mean, on one level, these guys are just, I mean, you know, I'm sorry, they're, they're, they're a bunch of losers and nut jobs. And, <laughs> Uh, you know, that's just uh, the reality of it. Um, and, you know, they're they're excited about their uh, their weapons and they're, you know, trying to prove, I guess, their uh, their bona fides by finding the most remote location they can to uh, occupy, uh, you know. But but the ideologic the, the ideology that they're coming from is um, it, it, at least part of that is it, it's, it's sort of. It's mainstreamed in the Republican Party. That's that's correct, and it has been uh, quite pointedly so, really ever since the rise of the Tea Party. But actually, I've been writing for some time about how uh, these ideas from the very far far right uh, have been steadily have been getting mainstreamed by conservative mainstream conservatives for the last 15 years. And that was what my book, uh, The Eliminationists, How Hate Talk Radicalized the American Right, really was focused on, uh, was how the, you know, basically the, it's, there's been this steady flow of ideas from the patriot 
Christian patriot, uh, you know, sovereign citizen movement um, has been steadily flowing into mainstream conservative thought for quite some time. And it's really, it really started becoming uh, massively so in beginning in 2009 with the rise of the Tea Party. And um, it's become acutely so in the last two years, especially, you know, I mean, groups like the Oath Keepers, these guys are just flat out same. They're, they're, you go to their meetings and it's just like the militia meetings I went to in the 1990s. Well, and, and a lot of the Tea Party organizations are just like that. Let's well, let's break that down because there's two sort of aspects of this. I mean, there's this sort of notion of like, I guess that um, the federal government shouldn't exist and we shouldn't have a government. And it should, right. all, everything should be private property rights. And, um, you know, uh, we we played one of our best ofs was an interview I did with, uh, I guess, a conversation <laughs> I did with uh, Walter Block, who is a. Uh, a supposed advisor to Ron Paul and a, you know, a libertarian uh, business professor at Loyola who, you know, had this notion of property rights that basically, you know, uh, you got to go back to the original property rights, of course, which are determined by what the French did with their agriculture, as opposed to, let's say, the indigenous people in this country when we showed up. But right. um, let's talk about the, you know, well, Walter Block does not have that sort of God squad quality that these guys seem to have. Uh, and my right. understanding is most of these guys are Mormon, but is it, is it Mormonism? I mean, what is the, let's talk about the religious strain in here. When you talk about the Oath Keepers, I'm not sure that people know who the Oath Keepers are. I, uh, the only Oath Keeper I think I've ever known was Gary Busey. And I, he was, I guess, um, uh, punted from that organization, but, but <laughs> tell us who the Oath Keepers are and, and, how the strains of like Mormonism and God squad stuff sort of enter into these, uh, these, you know, these, uh, would be warriors out in, in the, in Oregon. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, it's a very, it's a tangled web, but, uh, the underlying ideology is this, um, Patriot movement, which started out originally was called the Christian Patriot movement. It's very much uh, right wing um, sort of fundamentalism, but it's fundamentalism applied to the Constitution and the, the rules, the body of law, yeah, which means that it's highly selective and and arranged in a way to tell the narrative that they want to tell. And um, it, it becomes religious in certain co uh, components of the movement, especially these uh, the Bondi folks who are heavily Mormon, and, and they're drawing a lot of their ideas from a guy named Cleon Skousen, who uh, anybody who's watched Glenn Beck uh, in the last several years is familiar with, because Cleon Skousen was this uh, very far, far right Mormon ideologue who wrote these books that were basically uh, sort of this revamping of posse comitatus ideology, this radical um, localist government ideas. Uh, you know, the posse comitatus was this very far right uh, movement that started up in the in the fifties and sixties and spread into the seventies. Uh, that was all about uh, the believed that the most powerful um, member of law enforcement and the most powerful authority in the land was the local county sheriff and that the federal government had zero actual power and this these are is, like the guys who met with governor lepage up in uh in uh in in maine too my understanding is right i mean yeah, at one yeah. point lepage was actually going to act on this information and until his advisors had to talk him down because That's he thought right. that uh, they could, they were going to do some type of coup of the legislature based on the county sheriffs or something to that effect. Now, was this a function? Does it bleed in? I mean, there are two things that, that, that strike me about this. One is, is that if you are inclined to be a fundamentalist Christian, that fundamentalism as an M.O., 
uh, can easily be applied to just about anything, right? I mean, if you think right. the, the, you you can take that 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 worldview and apply it to the Constitution, then all of a sudden that's like uh, you know the 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 te te Ten Commandments, or they've been exactly. etched in stone. The other thing that occurs to me is that uh, in terms of of Mormonism. This is a religion that was born in the United States and had uh, a lot of problems with the federal government. And so it makes sense that on some level their religious doctrine would be directly applicable to issues like that. Yeah, yeah. Although, you know, Mormons also believe that the Constitution was divinely inspired. So, uh, and, and this is where the religious aspects get into it. And, and these guys all believe that their reading of the Constitution is the right one. And, and then at that point, religion also enters into it and stuff like that. But, but a lot of these guys link arms with organizations with the, such as the Oath Keepers, who are decidedly secular and non-religious. Um, and various other militia organizations that are also uh, notably secular and not openly religious, uh, but they wait. So oath they, keepers are, are are secular. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing. Uh, What's the oath religious. that they're taking? Is it is it just it's to, to the, the Constitution? Oh, okay. They're, they're, they say that they they're upholding. You know, they they try to attract people who are either veterans or have been in law enforcement, and they're saying. You, uh, you know, you're going to be still upholding your oath, even though you're no longer in the military, even though you're no longer in law enforcement, uh, that you're still upholding your oath that that you took. Um, oddly enough, they seem to forget that line in their oath about uh, obeying the president. I'm, I'm not sure how that uh, is, is a very selective uh, keeping of the oath. Let's just put it that way.